A mother comes face to face with her worst nightmare when she finds her son under six feet of water. I imagine that's the worst feeling in the world to see your child at the bottom of the pool. But when the clues don't add up, Dr. G is forced to consider a horrific scenario. Maybe somebody just threw him in the water to disguise his death. Then a train engineer panics when he spots a man lying on the tracks. It takes almost a mile for a big train to stop, and he clearly hits him. Now, it's up to Dr. G to piece together how and why this man died. Is it a suicide? Is it an accident? Is it a homicide? Altered lives, baffling medical mysteries, shocking revelations. These are the everyday cases of Dr. G, medical examiner. It's early morning in Orlando, Florida, and the District 9 morgue is already abuzz with talk of the day's cases. What's all the dots on his back? I think he's got spatial hemorrhages all over. It's a busy day in the morgue. We got homicides, we got unknown deaths, we have drug overdoses, we have a woman who might be suicide, might be a natural. It promises to be a heavy workload. So Dr. G wastes no time prepping for her first case of the day, a 12-year-old apparent drowning victim named Joey Lucas. This is a sad case that unfortunately we see all too often in spring and summer here in Florida. We average uh, just my jurisdiction about 12 a year of children who die from drowning. I don't know what we're gonna find, but hopefully we'll see why he is found at the bottom of the pool. It's a hot Tuesday night in the quaint suburb of Winter Park, Florida. Phil McGovern is heading off to bed when he notices 12-year-old Joey Lucas swimming in the pool next door. The timing's a little interesting. The neighbor sees him swimming at around midnight, and nobody else is out there. Phil is surprised to see Joey swimming so late at night, but thinks little of it since he often sees him in the pool. A few hours later, Joey's mother wakes up to get ready for her early morning shift at the diner. She peeks into her son's room to check on him. But to her surprise, he isn't there or anywhere else in the house. As a last resort, Linda goes outside to check the place Joey spends most of his spare time, the pool. And as she opens the door and steps out on the patio, she comes face to face with a mother's worst nightmare. She finds him at the bottom of the pool. I imagine that's the worst feeling in the world, to see your child at the bottom of the pool not moving. Phil hears Linda screaming, rushes over to help, and calls 911. Within minutes, emergency workers arrive and desperately try to revive the 12-year-old. They transport him to the hospital, but it's already too late. Dr. G's hands. All right. And Joey's family is counting on her for answers. Today we have a really sad story. This is a boy that's found at the bottom of the pool. The family says he's a very good swimmer. They say he likes to play Diver Dan, rescue in the pool. And sure enough, in the pool was the mask, the diving mask, and a snorkel. Now, there's some really sad facts about this case. For one, this little boy is depressed for a, a good reason. According to the investigator's report, at just 12 years old, Joey Lucas has already had a hard life. This is a child who's only 12 that's given way too much responsibility. He is pretty much made to take care of the father, who's a partial quadriplegic from an automobile accident. And unfortunately, the vast majority of his care falls on this young boy. His mother's got some mental issues, and he doesn't appear to be very well supervised. 
in some ways you think that he's got all of these responsibilities and he's made to grow up so fast. But yet on the other hand, we hear that he likes to play games in the pool and pretend he's a diver rescuing people. It was a sad juxtaposition of those two stories. But as she reads on, it only seems to get worse. He has used marijuana before. And he has been given sleeping pills in the past. A 12-year-old should not be given sleeping pills. What's going on in this child's life? Why is he there swimming at midnight? Now it's up to Dr. G to find out. And at the top of her list of suspects is accidental trauma. Possibly he's running around the pool and he trips and falls and hits his head, or he dives into the pool and hits his head. But there are a number of ways even strong swimmers can get into trouble in the water. Maybe he's holding his breath to stay underwater for an extended period of time and you can pass out. If nobody's around to see this, you're going to drown. Uh, kids need supervision in the water, even strong swimmers. And despite his young age and apparent clean bill of health, Dr. G will also be on the lookout for natural disease. Although we don't expect it with kids, they can have a heart attack, they can have a seizure. And if you have a heart attack or you have a seizure, you may have survived it on land, but you may not survive it in the water. So we're always going to be looking for that when somebody drowns. But given Joey's history of depression, Dr. G must also consider an even more tragic scenario. I'm a little worried that he's got ready access to a lot of pills in the house, because I could see this poor kid taking a bunch of medication and then going swimming and drowning. Still, taking into account all of the circumstances, Dr. G can't ignore the possibility that Joey simply fell victim to some form of abuse. Maybe, you know, they couldn't take him anymore, and so, you know, they strangle him and throw him into the pool. We must rule out child abuse. All right, we're ready, right? Yeah. When you have a drowning case that is unwitnessed, oftentimes you don't know exactly what happened, and you never will. The only thing you can do is piece together a possible scenario, but you probably will never have the definitive answer. Go far. We look very carefully on the external examination because you don't know what it's going to tell us. You know, that's the first step in determining what happened. All right, let's see. So I'm surprised when I see him. Not only was he given responsibilities way older than he should have had, he looks older. Uh, this 12-year-old boy is 5 foot 10, and he looks more like a 14 or 15-year-old. Gosh. As her gaze moves downward, Dr. G has her eyes peeled for any visible signs of abuse. We're going to look for bruises about the face, the mouth, the neck. Inch by inch, she scans the 12-year-old's body. Yeah, not a mark on him. <laughs> I don't see any evidence of trauma. I certainly don't see any evidence of struggle. But that could be a fool or two. There is some subtle trauma that can uh, kill children uh, that may leave very um, little marks on the outside. For a 12-year-old, he sounds pretty precocious, and he looks precocious. So I'm looking for everything. I'm looking for previous suicide attempts. I'm looking for even drug use. OK, what's his hand look like? She begins by checking for horizontal cuts or scars across the wrists. No evidence of any kind of previous suicide attempt. Then she scans the body for evidence of drug use, like bruised needle puncture marks. I don't think he injects. I don't see any vascular scars. I don't see any needle puncture marks. I don't see anything abnormal. Nothing. So far, the external exam has revealed nothing of note. But then a subtle clue catches Dr. G's eye. Do you see this? His hands aren't wrinkled, and his feet aren't wrinkled. Hmm. It made me think he probably wasn't in the water uh, all that long. 
and that, that was interesting. For Dr. G, this brings the most horrific possibility to the forefront. Maybe somebody just threw him in the water to disguise his death. I mean, that is paranoid thinking, but that's why I get paid. I get paid to always think of the worst. Could the worst have happened? To the outside world, some families seem so perfect. But things are not always as they appear. Yes, I know how much I owe. Give me a few days and he'll be gone. And no one ever imagines. They'll never let us be together. Perfect families could ever commit perfect crimes. Brand new Blood Relatives. Monday on Investigation Discovery.